Okay, this is kind of a, an odd art, I guess, if you want to call it that. But what I'm going to do is going to show you technique on how we're going to go about lapping the cylinder into the cylinder head on a VW horizontally opposed engine. Now, these engines are very similar to what a lot of current technology is using, or manufacturers are using based on current technology. They have the horizontally opposed WRX Subaru engine, which produces like over 300 horsepower, and you got turbo models, and the whole works, and they're pretty crazy for power because they're a low friction engine, and they uh, because they typically are usually a um, over square engine or under square engine where they have a smaller bore than the stroke so what you do is when you beef them up is you put a bigger cylinder on them and then that gives them an increased torque and then of course high ratio rockers and other things like that so going back to the cylinder heads lapping these in so I put the lapping compound on got a nice circle here of the material and I like to use the water based lapping compound because it's very easy to clean off. So basically how you're doing this is you're just pushing it down and you turn it and turn it and turn it. I should maybe make something that drives a cylinder but you know this way uh, what's happening is we're making sure that it's concentrically mated with the cylinder and then it also helps deck the top of the cylinder jug. So as long as you're pushing down and you can hear the tone changing now, it doesn't sound as scratchy or as rough and it feels better underhand also. And you can hear it's changing. So once it's changed enough that it's consistent then you can take it off and then check the top of the cylinder which I'll show you here in a second. So there's the top of the cylinder. It's nice and smooth and flat and mated. Okay, and of course we'll do a good cleanup on that prior to install. And then what I like to do is just take some brake clean, and it seems to be the best thing for removing this, and it gives you a quick visual. And if you watch, you'll kind of see this come to light. You can see there's a different color of, uh, of a ring that's formed all the way around in the combustion chamber. So that is going to show me where the ceiling is that I've created between the cylinder and then lap directly into that particular bore. So now that cylinder has to go with that particular bore. So it's important to make sure you keep them separated and then this way they're mated to each and every individual cylinder. So I'll take a little bit of compressed air and blow this out. I don't know if you can see there's a bit of a different color in there. I'll move the camera over a little bit. And so, so you can see the color between here and that ring. So what that is is that's the lapped portion that I now have that cylinder mated directly to that particular hole. So that's number two cylinder and we've got number two piston over here on the bench so I'll have to make sure that that stays with it. So we'll grab the next one and we'll look at this one again also and this one's really really looks good. It's hard to see on the camera but because I've done these before and it doesn't always come out so well. So we'll just go over and move again here. Maybe you can see it differently on this one as we go through the process here. So again, taking the lapping compound, which you can find it pretty well any jobber. And uh, put a nice gob of it all the way around. This stuff is really hazardous to the inside of your engine, so make sure you clean it out very well before you do any assembly work. So I'll put this on this. Now these um, heads that I'm using here, they're just a standard set of VW heads that, that I spent some time uh, not porting but match porting the gaskets to the, the particular ports in the cylinder heads. So I'll just go for a moment here and see what we get. I've done this in the past where I didn't spend as much time on it. 
and then when uh, I go and run the engine then you end up with a compression leak so it's best to make sure that you just spend the extra time and do it and So a lot of guys what they'll do also is they'll take that cylinder and or the cylinder head and they'll take the step out of here. These heads do not have the step. They've already been machined out, but the factory stock heads they have that step in there which is about 120 thou thick. And if you take that out, it will bring your compression up about one point. So you go from about an 8 to 1 to maybe just over a 9 to 1. Works pretty good, a little hard to get good fuel for it. But it does work really well for increasing the compression and hot rodding it up a little bit. It doesn't, it's not really the, the way you should be trying to get the power. Because when you realistically look at that, you want to make sure that you end up going back and uh, doing any deck work. To make sure that you have the right height on your piston and your sleeve when you go to install it so that's going to control ultimately your overall compression ratio based on the volume uh, of that cylinder because you're going to change the volume of the cylinder based on putting a shim underneath the barrel between the barrel and the block so I'll give this another little spray it's looking pretty good nice even dark ring all the way around Oh, look at that. Back to the drawing board. And this is not uncommon. An extra little bit of cleaning there. I just seen that there was a couple areas that didn't quite take the uh, complete lapping process. So I'm going to go back and just do it again. And sometimes you have to do this quite frequently. And I'm going to lean in that area and I can hear it and feel it now that I've got a better fit. So I'll give this a little wipe. And again, remember to go back and clean your cylinders thoroughly with compressed air and whatever choice of cleaning solution you use. I preferentially use brake clean. It seems to be the best. It's fairly economical for for the value of what you need it for while you're assembling engine components. And it allows a good surface for gaskets, especially needing to be completely free and clear of any grease and oils. So I'll take some compressed air. And give this a little blast out here. I'm just taking a look at what kind of a mess I've made in here. I'm just making sure that we have a little spot. Ah. There it is. Little piece in there that didn't seem like it was coming out. Now we got it. Okay, so we got a nice clean surface for this one now, also. You can probably see the color difference in there. Let's see if I can flip this up a little bit more and you can get a better look at it. And you can see the color if You can see this one just out the side of the camera here. You can see the difference between the the compression uh, cha or combustion chamber and then the actual deck there. Now it's nice and flat and smooth all the way across. So normally there's a, there's a step in there that's this width but about 120 to 140 thou thick and that changes like I said your compression ratio. So now I'll continue on with the cleaning and then I'll show you the assembly uh, I need to prepare the head. So you kind of need order of operations here. I need the head to be prepared. 
and lap to the cylinders. So uh, once it's lapped to the cylinders, then I can take the jugs with the pistons and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack them uh, in the cylinders and put them in simply because of the fact that I've got full floating pins that makes it very easy instead of monkeying around with the ring compressor in between the piston and the bottom side of the jug. So it makes it a lot easier if I stack it together on the bench and then when I put them on the engine then I can just slide the pistons in because I have full floating pins. Okay, And then with the full floating pins I'm going to use these, and not to advertise brand, but use these little Teflon buttons. And there's one there I've got out. And the Teflon button just sits down inside there like that. And sits about that close to the cylinder wall. And then if it ever walks out, then it just touches the cylinder wall and vibrates back. So this allows the pin to float, moves round and round. And then uh, that per reduces the amount of friction, which in any world of building engines is if you can decrease the amount of friction, then you can increase the amount of horsepower. And of course, typically reliability because now the engine's under less load to produce the power uh, or maybe even more power. So I'll continue on with the cleanup and then I'll carry on with the video of assembly.